I thought I was going to sort of convert my fellow uh, Brits to my astonishment who read it were the Muslims. And people have come up to me uh, sometimes and said, look, I've become a, um, gone back to Islam because of your books. Taking center stage today is Karen Armstrong. She is a decorated religious historian and best-selling author whose work has been translated into 45 languages. Armstrong, a former Catholic nun, has been described as one of the most intelligent contemporary defenders of religion. And on today's episode, Karen talks about her relationship with Islam. How and why Islam is so misunderstood in the West. Now, I know this is going to be a particular sweet spot for you, but I, I do believe that in order to understand where we are and how we got here, we have to look back. We have to look at history. Before we get into the history, I want to start with this particular question. As a non-Muslim, myself, what would you say the three most important things are about Islam I should know? Three important things about Islam. One, I think the importance of ritual as well as just doctrines. I was brought up very much in, in Catholicism and there was a lot of very abstruse doctrines that we had to agree with. That's not so prevalent in Islam. But uh, people learn, I think, not about religion, not just by learning uh, facts uh, 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 or reading scriptures, uh, but ritual and behavior changes your mind. And I think uh, the, the, one of the first things the prophet did, peace be upon him, was uh, advise his people who came to see him to pray, to prostrate themselves uh, five, five times a day. And this was very, very uncongenial to the Arabs who were uh, at this point very pleased with themselves because they were doing frightfully well uh, in, in Mecca uh, economically um, and that they were strong fighters and had strong opinions. But they had, were being asked to grovel on the ground like a slave. And we learn a, a, a great deal uh, of, of our actual uh, knowledge comes from behavior, from the way we behave, the way we act, and from our bodies. And these, the actual uh, prostrations was one of the first things that the Quraysh, the aristocrats of Mecca, were astonished at, that, the, that really uh, important people were re ready to put their face onto the earth and recognize uh, the the, the emptiness and uh, littleness of of themselves, and I think that that is one of the great things about Islam: the the, the constant uh, kenosis, they call it in in Greek, which means emptying, an emptying of self, and we do learn that not just by uh, doctrines or abstruse conversations, but from from our bodies, and so I think that was that was one of the first things that 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 drew me to Islam, plus the uh, extraordinary beauty of the Quran itself. Now, I have no Arabic, uh, and uh, I discovered this, however, at the very, very beginning of my career as a, as a historian of religion, when I was uh, working on a television program in Israel-Palestine. And at first, uh, the Israelis, uh, Israeli film company thought I was just a boring ex-nun. Um, You're but, far from boring. Uh, like we've had some really good chats but, before. Uh, they, but the Palestinians took me on. And uh, I remember one night we were all uh, a, a crowd, crowded, crammed car. And uh, they, they were, these were not devout Muslims. They were, some of them were drinking beer. And so they, they were, it was all very rowdy, and the radio was on. And then the Quran came on the radio. And instantly, these young men fell silent. 
and they were tr- tr- they were very anxious that I should understand how beautiful this was. They could say, "Oh, Karen, I wish you could hear this," and they said, "It means this and this," and they said, "Yes, but it also means that," um, and that was the beginning, I think, of my my interest in Islam. And what's the third thing that we should know about Islam? Well, another thing was because, uh, you see, when I left, I, I used to be a nun and I left my convent and I, I thought I'd never wanted anything to do with religion ever again, ever again. Uh, I've had it, <laughs> as it that were. that for you? Uh, but it was by encountering other religious traditions that I began to see what my own Catholic tradition had been trying to do at its best. And, and I remember uh, once uh, coming across a quotation from Ibn al-Arabi. And I was absolutely struck by this and I copied it out on a little card and pinned it on my board, on the, on the bulletin board beside my desk. And he says, it's this, he says, do not praise your own faith so exclusively that you disbelieve all the rest. If you do this, you will miss much good. Nay, you'll fail to recognize the real truth of the matter. God, the omnipotent and omniscient, cannot be confined to any one creed. For he says in the Quran, wheresoever ye turn, there is the face of Allah. Everybody praises what he knows. His God is his own creature. And in praising it, he praises himself. Consequently, he blames the beliefs of others which he would not do if he were just, but his dislike is based on ignorance. Now, in the West, I mean, I, mean, I think people would assume that Islam- Islamophobia came or was born from 9-11, but yeah, in fact, it actually goes a lot way back. And I think he said um, in an interview that the West have a difficult time looking at Islam and the Prophet from an objective angle. So... Can you expand on that? Yes. Well, I think you, we've got to remember that the West is a very much newcomer onto the stage of civilization. Um, Western Europe, uh, after the collapse of the Roman Empire, were, were, was for centuries a desolate place. The one thing they had was the church uh, that pulled them together. And then they, but then, of course, they encountered Islam which was a great world religion, a massive empire. Um, It was a a vast success story. And um, and I think that that, that that created a sort of sense of opposition. And I think that that uh, that sense of um, littleness, um, humiliation, um, started the West off on a bad track to Islam. And so there's a certain resentment and a a, a certain liking to find something wrong with it. Um, You know, people love doing that. Um, And that's one of the reasons why I I started writing about Islam, for example, at the time of the Salman Rushdie crisis, for example. And what was the reception that you received well, after the, writing your first book? Well, I, I, I thought I was going to sort of convert my fellow uh, Brits uh, to, to have a more uh, nuanced view of Islam, but not, not a bit of it. The people, to my astonishment, who read it were the Muslims, the Muslim communities in the UK. And people have come up to me uh, sometimes and said, look, I've become a, um, um, gone back to Islam because of your books. Because, of course, many people have become westernized. So they found their roots through and, you. Yes. And, and so uh, my sort of western style approach is that well, it has to be western because that's what I am. Uh, that, that gave them a, a, an entree, I think, uh, in, in, into back, going back to Islam. Um, and, um, and then I got very, very angry, too, about the way Islam was being pilloried, for example. I think it's fascinating how you've given your life, your life's work towards all of these other religions. But do you realize the impact you make 
within the Muslim community. Do you realise how many lives you touch, especially when it comes to Muslim women as well? It, it has been a very, very great astonishment to me because I'd never expected that. I thought Muslims knew all this uh, stuff and, and they wouldn't want to hear anything from me. But I've been very touched and moved by the generosity of Muslims who don't think I'm, I'm uh, who don't seem to think I'm interfering and telling them about their religion, but a great openness and uh, uh, enthusiasm, and um, and and and, it, it, and that opens your heart in a sense and makes you makes you think. Uh, it's it, it, and also I, I I get so distressed by the. The, the way Islam is, has been pilloried in, in the West. Now, you've written three books on Islam, one in particular about the history of Islam, but two of them is about the prophets, peace be, be upon him. Um, can you tell me, like again, as a non-Muslim, can you tell me more about him and what he stood for? What was he about? He was the most extraordinary human being. He had the ability to open his mind away from uh, the commercial uh, expertise of Mecca at, in the seventh century when when a business was all um, and was able to go deeply into himself into the unconscious mind uh, into the visionary world was able to do that and was able to do it without being pompous or um, messianic, or treating himself as, as a savior, but getting right right to the heart of, 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 of religion. And he could look at the, uh, the troubles of his time, and, Me and Mecca was in, uh, it seemed to be going marvelously well because of its, its wonderful new economy. But uh, Muhammad could see the faults in that, which meant pride and what we've got in the West today, uh, delighted ourselves and, 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 and a wrong sense of values. Uh, but the way he was ready to open himself to that um, and um, the devastation of those uh, revelations, he wasn't just having a nice prayer and... Uh, having a nice little warm glow, and then went go, telling other people about it. They were they were devastating attack of 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 uh, that went down deeply into the self and uh, turned everything upside down. But with the first time he had a real revelation, he crawled on his hands and knees to his wife and said, "Cover me, cover me," um, and she. Uh, and she, she, she was wonderful. She, she looked after and said, "This is all right. Go on." And, and that, I think, uh, was what what drew me to Islam, and, and what in so very, very often we um, in in our religions we it's about me and about my my spirituality and my nice warm glow, or in in or my relationship with Jesus. But always uh, with, with the prophet who was going out and looking at what was wrong in society, what was, what was needed here and now when there was a problem, an economic problem, a political problem. Instead of just uh, saying, well, we'll discuss this economy now, uh, you prayed and you opened yourself up to that, in that kenosis, that emptying, as the Greeks call it, uh, of the self, prostrating yourself and letting the divine in. I can't thank you enough for you being here. I, I don't think you really realise how many lives and people you touch. Thank you so much for all of your work and I hope everybody's um, enjoyed the session today. Thank you so much. <laughs>